Father, we come as a community that finds itself perplexed on every side, oh Lord. Somebody said, and I ain't going to call their name, this is a dying community. Y'all don't look dead to me. <laughs> Y'all don't look dead to me. I'm just saying. Cairo, Illinois is dying. The town sits at the junction of the Mississippi and Ohio rivers. At one point, it was a booming railroad and port hub, but those industries hardly exist here now. And through decades of racial tension and white flight, the population has plummeted tenfold. Unemployment is double the national rate. 15% of the population lives in the McBride and Elmwood public housing units. And now, the Department of Housing and Urban Development wants to demolish them. We've examined uh, virtually every option that there is. This, unfortunately, is a dying community. People don't have jobs there. If someone can find a solution that is better than the one that we have, I am all ears. This is Carol. This is my home. And I've made a home for my kids. And I don't plan to leave my home for no one. As you can see, I try my best to keep my apartment clean, but so many roaches and dust and dirt, but still I get on my hands and knees, make sure that my apartment is clean for my babies. Shayla Brooker's family has lived in Cairo for 13 years. And in McBride housing, that means years of bug infestations, shoddy plumbing, lights that often don't work. We have to wash our, uh, the, our dishes in a tub because sometimes our sink that would be clogging up and stuff. For the past year, her kids Latrice, Angelo, and Jaden have had to sleep together in the living room. This is their room. At the moment, we don't have beds because of the infestation and the bugs. Shayla works on a factory line and paid her monthly income-based rent until HUD announced its plans for demolition. Many in town blame the former mayor and executive director of housing, James Wilson. Oh, yeah. Are, are you Mr. Wilson? Yes, I am. My name is Antonia Hilton. Glad to meet you. I'm with an HBO crew. For years, Wilson and friends allegedly mismanaged and misspent public housing tax dollars. It wasn't until 2015 that authorities began investigating which led to HUD stepping in. I'm not aware of anything. Wilson previously denied wrongdoing and declined to comment on the investigation into his actions. But the damage is already done. It'll take $7 million to bring the units back up to code. Also, rebuilding housing isn't what HUD does anymore. Over the years, HUD has lost the federal funds to construct homes for low-income Americans. And Carson hasn't been able to persuade private builders to venture into Cairo. Thank you for welcoming me to, uh, to your town. During a visit to Cairo on August 8th, Carson said, it seems unfair that the people who are here now have to suffer the consequences of the mistakes that were made by others. But unfortunately, that's the world that we live in. There is a lot of unfairness in our world. This is what's shown on the front. What HUD can offer are vouchers that reimburse the cost of moving and Section 8 housing. We're not in the rebuilding of housing business anymore. Our message has been we have to deal with health and safety. Um, HUD's motto is to provide decent, safe, and sanitary housing. Each day that we don't remove families from what has happened to Elmwood and McBride, we're not holding ourselves accountable to our mission. So there's no scenario in which everyone who's currently in McBride and Elmwood will just move down the street and stay in buildings right next door. There's no current scenario. And I think anything outside of being realistic is just false. One minute I'm sitting up here going to take my rent to the bank so that I can uh, stay in this apartment. And now you're telling us we got to move? No, that's not right. And that's not fair. Carol in crisis, bring us here are Shayla's choices. Keep her job and remain in a community she loves, while living in housing even she admits is barely tolerable. Or with HUD's help, apply for a new home, find a new job, and move. But even that requires her to front some of the money. Who do you feel did you wrong? Is it the local people who ran the housing authority? Is it HUD who's telling you now that you've got to move? Honestly, both. 
Because if it hadn't been for HUD sending the money down here and the government sending money down here and not coming down here for themselves to see what their money going to, it wouldn't be in this mess. When she moved here to Carroll, she found like her comfort zone mm -hmm. and how she likes um, the people here. They help each other out and stuff. And having to move is going to split them up. So what would be the ideal solution for you? I would stay in Carroll, but live in like different places, like a house or something like that. But most of the places in Carroll are abandoned. Do you feel like your family has enough options right now? Um, not really, because the options now are, is either move. There's not really any other options. You say you don't want to leave, but as far as HUD is concerned, at some point, they're going to come here, and these buildings have to go. People can't stay. Yeah. So what's going to happen the day that they come and they're ready to knock them down? Do you know where you'll be? Do you know what you're going to do? No. No, I don't.